بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد We should all strive our best to learn more and more about Islam to be become grounded in the usul al-deen in the foundation of the religion for sure that if we ascribe to Islam, then we are probably people who at least are praying, praying five times a day. And if you're praying five times a day, then you want to be praying ala fiqh. You want to have knowledge and understanding of why you're praying, who you're praying to, and how to pray properly. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to worship Him and Him alone. Qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabi al kareem I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to worship Him and Him alone. He, and, and in fact, that is the uh, purpose of our creation, that we are to worship Him and Him alone and ascribe no partners to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا And worship Allah and do not ascribe, uh, do not associate partners with Him. So Allah ordered us. He says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ This is ithbat. He began with affirming ibadah. That ibadah only goes to Him. وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا And that's a nafi. That's negating, negating all false worship. Negating worship anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, the creator of the heavens and earth, the only one worthy of worship, then we not only have to have knowledge, but we have to f act upon that knowledge. We have to have knowledge of what, how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly in accordance with what? The Kitab Allah wa Sunnat al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That means that uh, we have to be sincere to Allah with our hearts. Our, our heart must be uh, firm upon worshiping Allah, the Almighty, the Creator of the heavens and earth, the only one worthy of worship. And the worship that we do has to be in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. And this brings us to the Hadith, which uh, is a very important Hadith, which shows us the importance of being in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our worship, regardless of whether it's salat. Whether it's zakat, whether it's fiqh, whether it's our hajj, whether it's our dua, our supplication, whether it's uh, any act of worship that you're doing, we should strive our best to do it in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because he was put there, he was sent as a prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, to give us guidance. He was sent as a warner. He was sent as a giver of glad tidings. He was sent with uh, uh, laws for us to follow in order for our own benefit, for our own benefit and the be benefit of mankind. An Um Al Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man athatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fu wa rad. Wa fi riwayati li muslim min amila, amalin, laysa alayhi amruna, laysa alayhi amruna, fu hu wa rad. In this hadith or hadithan of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that was narrated by the mother of the believers Aisha Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha and may Allah be pleased with all the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha Ajma'een Walau Kariya Al-Kafirun Walau Kariya Shia Even if the Shia hate it Even if the disbelievers hate it We are we supplicate for the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we love them and we follow their example Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu Majma'een Aisha, the mother of the believers said Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha she said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said whoever innovates in this matter of ours then it is rejected and in another narration that was uh, collected in Muslim whoever does a, an action which is not in accordance with uh, this affair of ours, meaning the religion, then, then it's rejected. In this hadith, there are some great benefits for, for, for all of us in general, but even especially for the women, and we, we will we'll mention those very shortly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمْنُهُمْ شُرَكَاءُ شَرَعُوا لَهُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا لَمْ يَأْذَنُوا بِهِ اللَّهِ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in Surah Al-Shura, verse 21, He said, and do they have partners that, uh, you know, legislate for, uh, for them in the religion? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given them permission to do? I mean, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this rhetorical question for the, those people that they, there's, it's not possible for them to answer, yes, we have partners that, uh, that uh, are legislating on behalf of you, Ya Rabbi Subhana. Absolutely not. So that shows us that bid'ah in the religion is absolutely unacceptable. And that's what the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha uh, shows and illustrates for us. وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِينَ O عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءَ الْمَهْدِينَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْحَدِيثِ In the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it also illustrates for us of that we should follow. Alaykum bi sunnati. It is upon us as Muslims. The sunnah of who? Of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the sunnah of his rightly guided khulafa, rashidin The rightly guided khalifat. And who are the rightly guided khalifat? They are Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They are Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They are Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Uh, and may Allah be pleased with all the Sahabat of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And those are the, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Khulafa al-Rashideen, that are rightly guided, and who we are ordered to follow, their sunnah. We follow them in what they were united upon in creed. We follow them in fiqh. As long as it is muwafiqli sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not an issue of ijtihad on their behalf because maybe they didn't have, were unaware of the nas or a particular text did not reach them, a particular hadith, one sahabi heard it and maybe another sahabi, sahabi didn't hear it. They are excused for those, those things and those things are in uh, um, uh, affairs of jurisprudence. But as far as creed, Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'id were united. They were united upon kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in their creed and their minhaj, their methodology of da'wah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. So this hadith illustrates for us that this amr, amrina, meaning our religion, is what is legislated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his actions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed this religion kama qala ta'ala al yawm akmaltu lakum dinakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and this day I have perfected your religion for you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't leave anything good and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't do, uh, fulfilled his duty sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at illustrating and every, everything that is good. His sunnah illustrates everything that is good. So if we follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in its pristine form, then we're following goodness. And may Allah bless us with tawfiq in that. Some of the benefits that we gain from this hadith Number one, in the Nisa'a, a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ummahat mu'mineen. That the women of the, the, the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the mothers of the believers. Because that's why in the left of the hadith, as it was narrated, an ummul an ummul mu'mineen. Aishita radiallahu ta'ala anha that it was narrated on the authority of the mother of the believers Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha so this shows us one of the benefits we get from this hadith is that the uh, the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the mothers of the believers another benefit we gain from this hadith is the permissibility to take a kunya even if a person does not have the uh, have a child by that name. So, for example, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Ummul Mu'mineen, or it was illustrated just as that, 
that she was the mother of the believers. But anyway, from this hadith, one of the things the scholars they derive is that the permissibility of taking a kunya. For example, you could be Abu Abdurrahman if you're a man, or Abu Abdullah, or Abu uh, Abdulaziz, or, or whatever. Uh, um Fatima, Um Abdurrahman, etc. Even if you do not have a child by that name. Another benefit derived from this hadith is that this hadith also encourages the women to gain knowledge of the religion, to have fiqh fi deen. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another hadith, Man Allahu bihi khayran, fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. So from this, this hadith illustrates for us and encourages us all to have fiqh fi deen. And especially the women, because look at the shaykha, alama, Aishita, Umm al Mu'mineen, you know, the mother of the believers, who was an alama, who was a shaykha, who uh, people went to her for, for fatawa. They went for her because she knew the sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. She knew things that other sahaba didn't know because she was in the house of the Prophet. ﷺ. And so she, radiallahu ta'ala anha, was a person who had fiqh fi deen. So this encourages us, the, the believing women, to have fiqh fi deen, to learn your religion, be strong in your religion, understand your religion, and spread the knowledge to other women and to your children, and, and so forth, and raise up the community based on ilm wa kitab wa sunnah. Another benefit of this hadith is that also that yanbaghi an takun al mar'atu da'iyata khair da'iyat al khair that it is in an obligation for a woman to be a person to call, who calls to good and in fact that it goes that's not restricted to women it's for the men as well that we all should be a door or a key to goodness not a key to closing the door to goodness not someone who uh, closes off goodness and being a door or a window to evil. No, instead the believer should always be a person illustrating goodness for other people, for all of mankind in fact, to take uh, lessons from. Bi'idhnillah ta'ala. May Allah bless us to be of that, I mean, be of the, the people of khair and the salihin. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows the that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected his deen and his sharia, his sharia, and that uh, the Muslim is on khair as long as they follow the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another benefit of this hadith is that this hadith uh, also shows us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, gave dawah and May clarified for us the religion in totality. That Islam has been completely uh, explained and the path is clear for us in com without any shortcomings. Regardless of new uh, forms of technology and the way life is so much different than the time of the Salaf and, and so forth. Yes, life has changed and technology has changed. Life is very is drastically different in many respects. But the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and the religion of Islam is preserved. And it's there, it's a path for us to uh, arbitrate our dispute, to live our life, to interact with one another, it gives us those boundaries and it shows us how we can be successful during, during all time. And that's a ni'mah of following the sunnah of uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the obligation of uh, following the Prophet Sallallahu Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the prohibition of following bid'ah, of innovating something new with regards to religious matters. We're not saying now that you can't use a microphone to call the adhan, or you can't, get a car, you can't buy a car to go to the masjid. No, we're not saying that. What we're saying is, is that those things which are in the, have to do with the uh, uh, ibadah, with worship. For example, we already know the Fajr prayer is rakatain. Then there is no uh, 
adding to that or taking away from that. And it is preserved. It is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're not going to know all the reasons or all the hikmah or all the wisdom behind it, but we are ordered ittiba. We are ordered to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Dhuhr is for rakat. We don't change it and we don't change uh, an aspect of legislation to fit this and that, but rather we stick in accordance to what the texts have provided us and we leave those things which we do not know, those affairs we don't understand, we ask the, the people of knowledge, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْأَلَهْ لِذِكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So those newly invented matters that have to do with issues of this worldly life, new forms of technology, new forms of currency, new forms of interaction, we, uh, social networks, all these things. When, we, when it comes to how this fits into the life of the Muslim, then we should ask the scholars, ask those people of knowledge to see how it fits in our life and how we can use it to benefit from and how to stay away from its harms. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith is also a refutation on Ahl al-Bidah. Those people who, th who make it permissible to innovate in the religion of the Prophet wasallam to come up with new types of dhikr. Those people who say, well, turn off the lights, uh, say Allahu, Allahu, Allahu a thousand times or Allah, Allah, Allah until slobber comes out of your mouth. Those people who have these new types of, of ibadah, this is a refutation of them. That it's, un, it's not accepted. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man fi amrina hadham alaysa minhu fuurad. Whoever innovates something in this matter of ours will have it rejected. So that's rejected. All these new types, uh, the swirling dervishes, and all these other people who dancing, think they can dance into Jannah or whatever they're, they're doing, jan dancing themselves into, uh, to, till they're ecstatic, until they're just, they, they feel like they've, they've, they've transcended their bodies or whatever. All of this has no place in Islam. There's no, no foundation. There's no relation with the foundation and founding, founding principles of Islam, and those are all forms of innovation that will lead to the fires. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Kulu bidatun dalala wa kulu dalalatun fil nar." All bid'a, all innovation, it leads to the fire, and uh, all innovation leads to uh, misguidance, and all misguidance leads to the hellfire. And who from amongst us would like to go to the hellfire? Another um, benefit of this hadith is this hadith also illustrates one of the shurut uh, for having our deeds accepted by Allah the Almighty and that is that whatever we do it should be in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam because uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said من أحدث في أمرنا هذا من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد whoever innovates in this affair of ours meaning the religion uh, for who are then it will be rejected so that means if you want to have your deeds accepted then it should be in accordance with this affair of ours. What is this affair of ours? It is the deen of Allah. It is the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that is, uh, that shows us that's one of the shurut. That's a shart min uh, shurut to kabul al-amal. That is one of the conditions for having our deeds accepted. And the other one is, is that we have sincerity to Allah. We have ikhlas. As is illustrated in the other hadith, a very important hadith, which we're all aware of, which is the hadith of, uh, uh, of Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qal sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, inma a'malu bin niyad wa inma likulli imri manawa fa man kana hijjutu illa Allahi wa rasooli fa hijjutu illa Allahi wa rasooli. Fa man kana hijjutu illi dunya yisibaha imratin yankihu in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, it illustrates for us what? It illustrates for us uh, sincerity to Allah. That in the verily actions are tied to the intentions. And everyone should get that for which he intended. So that shows us that we have to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our deeds. And they have to be in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also this hadith shows us the ibtala munkarat, that uh, the falseness of munkar, of, of doing things that are evil and wicked. This hadith also shows us, this hadith is also, as the ulama say, anna hadith 
uh, asl min usul al-deen. That this hadith is a foundation from amongst the, the uh, pillars of the religion or amongst the foundation uh, of this religion. It's a very important foundation. When the asl fi ibadat al hadr And that also we get from this hadith is that the origin of worship, of an act of worship, is that it's impermissible. Unless what? Unless you have some something from, you have a textual proof from Kitabillah, from the Quran, or the Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the opposite of that. These are uh, kawaid, these are fiqh principles which we should try to memorize or at least uh, ha- be uh, understand them. So the first principle we just mentioned, and the asal fi ibadat al hadr that the origin of any worship is that it's prohibited unless there is dalil from the Quran and the Sunnah. So that means when we see someone, they go to the graves of the awliya, for example, and they dance around them, or they slaughter a sheep for them, or they uh, sleep and they pray to them and they make supplication. All of those are acts of worship. But none of them can we find in the Quran and the Sunnah. So we should avoid them from the get-go. From the get-go, if you don't have evidence for what you're doing, you know that you and and you're uh, unless you're totally unaware and you have to follow people who are knowledgeable in that respect, then avoid it because the asl of ibadat is al hadr, and then al asl and al asla fi 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 adat al iba, and then the asl of the other things like our eating, our dre- the way we dress, um, and other forms of interaction is that it's permissible unless. Something from the Quran and the Sunnah comes to sh- or ijma of the ulama or qiyas comes to show that it's impermissible. For example, we don't have anything in the Quran and the Sunnah necessarily that illustrates that sm- cigarette smoking is, per- is, per- is impermissible. But we know this because now the ulama know that the harms of the, the thing of smoking. Uh, it not only outweighs the good, that there is no good, that it's a waste of your money, that it's a waste of an israf in mal is, is, is haram. Uh, smoking, it, it causes, the damage it causes to your body is, uh, is, is uh, impermissible because the Prophet wasallam said, la darar wa la dirar. Even though we don't have a, a text that specifically re- says smoking, but it shows us from other texts that that is an impermissible action. However, uh, most of the things in the world are permissible unless there is something from the Quran or the Sunnah or the Ijma. The scholars are have consensus that it's impermissible, and that that is some of the benefits we derive from this hadith and those are important principles that I hope that we can benefit from and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam